Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to our climate petition send-off party. I just want to say thank you to everyone that's here right now. I can't believe that we have so many people in standing room only. Um, so I'm Jessica Zatella. And I'm Allison Trutling. And uh, we're here to talk to you about climate change. So welcome to our climate petition send-off. Uh, directly after this event, by the way, we're going to be going down to the Department of Environmental Protection to give them our petition, and we're going to call on them to reduce the greenhouse gases, uh, gas emissions, and we're here today also with 350 Maine. Make sure you stop over to their table, sign the youth petition if you haven't signed it yet. Um, Citizens Climate Lobby, also want to give a thanks to them, Conservation Law Foundation and our Children's Trust, as well as this beautiful movement of the youth of America standing up to make a change. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Now please turn your attention to Charles Spanger, who will lead us in song. Beautiful, everybody. Good job. Um, so, we think that it is time for everyone to open their eyes to the world around us. We live in a country that only a few months ago was simultaneously burning from wildfires in the West and drowning from hurricane flood related flooding in the South. Yes, storms happen all the time. But have you noticed how many are happening around us lately? Yeah, right now, our atmosphere CO2 levels have reached over 400 parts per million. Going back over 800,000 years, CO2 levels never exceeded 300 parts per million. And the rate of increase is now 50 times higher than it ever was historically. This problem was not created by our generation, but it was fed by greed and addiction to fossil fuels, and we are here to help and we are willing to help, and we want to help, because this is our land, and we will protect this. Thank you. So now I'd like to give a warm welcome to Phoebe from Ocean Ave Elementary in second grade. Um, she's the youngest of our bunch, and that does not mean that she is any less quieter or brilliant or bold in her, her quest to get this this beautiful environment and keep it safe. So she's got a lot to say about protecting our planet. So here you go, Phoebe. Hello, Portland. My name is Phoebe McDonald and I am in second grade at Ocean Avenue Elementary. I am here today to discuss the animals in the ocean. They are in danger. There is... A there is too much plastic in the ocean. Ocean animals think it's food and they eat it. They 
get tangled up in some of it. Seed turtles get straws stuck up their noses. I don't feel the ocean animals deserve to live in a dirty environment. They get hurt with plastic. Plastic is wonderful because it is durable. Plastic is terrible because it is durable. Stuff you use once for a few minutes stays in the environment for a long, long time. We didn't know before that plastic doesn't go away. It breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces and, pre and creates a smog of microplastic in the ocean. Here's one small thing we can do right now. Stop using plastic straws when you don't need one. Portland restaurants don't give me straws when I don't ask for them. Plastic straws use lots and lots of oil to make and to transport. We cannot re they cannot be recycled. Did you know 500 million straws are used every day in the United States? That's too many. Let's all agree to stop using them. There are only a few kids who don't use straws in the cafeteria at my school. I implore you to make the ocean a better place for all ocean animals. Ocean Avenue Elementary is the home of the dolphins. We should be their first protectors. Thank you. Um, now, do you have any, does anyone have any questions? I can take three questions. I can take three questions. Any questions from anyone? If we want to use straws, is there anything that we can do if we have to use straws? Very good question. Well, there is one solution to this. There's one or, well, actually, there's a lot of solutions to this. <laughs> but there's one solution that's kind of better than the average. We can either use no straws or we can start getting or persuading Portland restaurants to use paper straws and not plastic straws. <laughs> yeah. That, that is also a very good question. Well, it's difficult to persuade people to stop doing something they've been doing for like almost decades. Well, decades. Um, well, dec yeah, decades. But um, we can... Uh, we can, we can ask them to not use plastic straws or to make it optional. Like, to ask people if they want a straw or not before giving them, say, if they order a lemonade before, like, um, asking, like, they should probably ask if, they should probably ask before they give, before they give you a plastic straw. Or they can give you a paper straw if they start getting paper straws. Yeah. How are you going to talk to the other kids in your class? Do you have an idea of how to change things in your school? Well, that I've already been starting to do. It is difficult to, pers it's also difficult to persuade children my age and older and younger to stop using things we've been using for a long time. And it's kind of easier to persuade kids, it's easier to persuade kids to do it. So you just, Ask them nicely if they, well, they can get a straw if they want one, or, or the, or the um, lunch people can stop giving out plastic straws. All right, everyone, that was Phoebe. Okay, so.
Next up is Lucia, a 10th grader from Casco Bay High School, speaking on ocean acidification. So oceans today are more acidic than they've been in 300 million years. So Lucia's going to tell us a little bit about that. Hi, everybody. I'm Lucia. Um, so. Former President Barack Obama once said, we are the changes that we need to see. Here in Maine, we are blessed with, to have some of the most beautiful nature, natural features in the world. It is the views of the oceans, lighthouses, and the pine-covered forests that draw people to our wonderful state. However, it is the amazing people who keep them here. We are so fortunate to call this beautiful city and state our home. And we are the ones who will need to change what we are doing to help stop climate change. Ocean acidification is a fast coming problem that will affect us in monumental ways. When excess CO2 finds itself into the oceans, it creates a problem with the pH level and it is the shellfish and other small organisms that will first be the ones to suffer. Due to the lack of natural resources the shelf, uh, for the shellfish to build their shells, we will see smaller shellfish and less of them. This will affect the fishing unit economy, which is heavily relied on in Maine. When I first learned about the effects that we were having on the ocean, it felt extremely daunting and scary. I was constantly hearing, it's your task to fix this, and it's your job. However, through education and many, many conversations with peers, teachers, and parents about the future, I realized that in order to fix this, we'll need all ages, all generations, and all people to be part of the solution. <laughs> It is the love of Maine and the oceans that motivates so many, including myself, to fight for the climate. I am fortunate enough to live on an island where I take a boat to school each and every day. I feel that as Mainers, it is our moral obligation to fix what we have done. This problem is not something that can be simply waved away. It is something that needs to be addressed and acted upon, not in a year, not in 60 days, not in a month, but today and every day to follow. Today we are turning a new page on our force of acting against climate change and helping our oceans. The future of our world is not only in the hands of children and the younger generations, but in the hands of every person on Earth. The speed that the climate is changing often feels alarming. However, bit by bit, it can be seem less so. Everything that we can possibly do to fix it, we need to. The Earth can survive whatever we put it through. However, without a healthy Earth, we will not. Empowerment of others is what is what like, like what is happening right now is what will make the problems like ocean acidification seem less daunting and more solvable. I truly believe that through uniting as a whole and continuously sending out messages about the effect we are having, we can make a difference. With each step that we are taking, we are gaining more information and becoming closer to our goal of a healthy and sustainable world with plenty of shellfish to go around. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucia. That was inspiring. So while this, is a ce this celebration is about um, going against climate change, which is affecting the entire world, sometimes it's necessary to narrow the scope to where we live and to take action on the problems within our own regions and towns. So I'd like to introduce Cassidy Townsend from King Middle School, and she's an eighth grader there talking about Maine and Seas and Solutions. So I'm Cassidy. I'm in eighth grade at King Middle School. Um, our oceans are in danger, and many, if not all, the creatures in the ocean are being led right down the path to extinction, and we are to blame. We've emitted things like methane and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and heavily polluted oceans. Although the gases in the atmosphere will take centuries to dissipate, taking action now will ensure that we are st starting the process of improvement instead of worsening the pollution levels taking place now. Things like severe droughts, food shortages, floods, and severe storms can be lessened by the climate adjusting back to its normal state. It's crucial for us to take action before it's too late. We need to meet the challenges of our warming planet now by reducing our carbon footprint, switching to renewable energy sources, and being innovative. 
Reducing your carbon footprint is essential in order to ensure a future for life on our planet. Greenhouse gas emissions are causing temperature rise and causing large glaciers to melt and put fresh water into oceans. The oceans are rising, getting warmer, causing the salinization and acidity levels to drop, bringing many species of fish closer to extinction. Killing fish may not seem like much of a serious problem, but it's a significant industry for places all around the world, including Maine and especially Portland, where our working waterfront relies on local fishermen and women to provide fresh fish to restaurants and fish markets locally and around the world. Reduce your carbon footprint with innovation. Individual citizens can recycle, drive less, and turn off your lights, drive electric vehicles, take public transportation, purchase electricity from renewable sources, and be smart consumers. To do this on a larger scale, the city of Portland and the state of Maine needs to switch to renewable energy sources today. Harvesting the sun and wind are clean sources of energy, and investing in this technology will create high-skilled, well-paying jobs. Portland should demand that every new building project be net zero. I'm learning about net zero design in school. <laughs> I'm learning about net zero design in school and have designed a multi-family net zero home. I visited Bayside Anchor, a passive house design, and I have talked to architects. Buildings account for 40% of greenhouse gas emissions, so requiring net zero buildings would make a significant impact in reducing our carbon footprint. We all need to work together to conquer the issues that the current generation created so that my generation and future generations can have better opportunities for living on a healthy planet. Thank you, Cassidy. All right, so we are, as Cassidy mentioned, we are in the sixth mass extinction ever on Earth, because this is the planet we live on. This is the first one that has knowingly been caused by another species. We knew what we were doing. But it's not too late, and there is still time. So let's have Anna from Friends School tell us a little bit about that through a poem. Thank you. At a climate meeting at King Middle School, we were asked to tell everyone why we care, why we are doing what we're doing now. I was unsure of what to say. There were so many words. So when it was my turn, I blurted, I want to be an ornithologist. How can I study birds if there aren't any? Now, again, I feel the same. So many words. But someone I love told me to share what I believed was important. So I wrote a poem. Here we are, soaring. This planet is on our wings, nestled on gleaming feathers, our responsibility, our trust. We swoop and dive, spiraling closer and closer to the heat, the searing brightness. If your children's children ask you about what happened, how we failed, tell them. Tell them about how we were Icarus, flying too close to the sun. Show them the horror as our feathers fell, one by one, scorched and lifeless. Tell them how our planet, Earth, mimicked their fall, and ask them who will be there to catch it, build new wings, before the delicate glass balance of our Earth is shattered, broken. Maybe not. Maybe what you tell future generations is the story of how Icarus listened. Listen to his father. Listen to the voices, unified, screaming, save our planet, and we carry Earth on our wings once more. Free as the birds soaring outside, from the smallest chickadee and wren to the golden eagle. Which story will you choose? How will you fly this planet? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, keep it coming. Awesome job. All right, so like we just sang moments ago, Maine is a state that prides itself on its pristine beauty, but this does not mean that we are immune to be plagued by pollution. So I would like to invite Hunter Lachance up from Kennebunkport High School to talk about health in, in Maine and with, our, with uh, air pollution. Don't mind me. Okay. 
Uh, hello, my name is Hunter Lachance. Uh, I attend Kenny Bunk High School, and I'm an asthmatic. In fourth grade, I first started getting asthma attacks. I have missed over 120 days of school with my asthma. In sixth grade alone, I missed 32 days of school. I'm here today to tell you what it's like to be an asthmatic and how the environment affects my asthma. Many days when I did attend school, the nurse would call my parents to come get me because my asthma would get worse. I have been rushed to the emergency rooms multiple times. I've had hours of doctor's visits and practicing breathing just to give me an edge on my asthma. It's not very fun. It's limited my ability to play some of my favorite sports and games. It's changed my ability in my schoolwork because of all my sick days. Today, my inhaler is in my backpack and every sports bag I own. I was limited doing everything from playing hockey to a simple snowball fight, which was emotional for me. I wish I could just be the old me, which was energetic and silly. I wanted to play outside, but I couldn't. I wanted to go back to school to see my friends, but I couldn't. Asthma has serious effects on the body, such as shortness of breath, trouble sleeping, headaches, dizziness, and loss of appetite. These effects came to a shock to me as I, as I tried to adjust to having asthma. But as many people with asthma will tell you, this struggle makes everything hard. So while I was homesick with asthma, sometimes I would research my condition. And I've started to learn more and more, and I've realized how important it is for us to keep our air clean. So as many know, asthma is inflamed by many things stress, cold air, pollen, but one of the big triggers is dirty air. Pollutions is increasing things like ozone, air particulates, and other greenhouse gases. Kids like me are forced inside or on the sidelines on bad air days. As we increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, natural occurrences like pollen releases are earlier and stronger as our climate warms. According to the MCDCP, roughly 9.1% of Maine's children have asthma, which is higher than the national average. And we get more air pollution than many other states because of winds bring pollutions from other states' power plants. And believe me, as a child with asthma, air is everything. We need to keep Maine's air clean for the thousands of kids like me who suffer from asthma, and for everyone else, too. Asthma is no fun. It's scary when I cannot breathe and I need to miss school and hang out indoors on bad air days. Maine's Department of Environmental Protection must do more to clean and maintain Maine's air and lower its carbon emissions because everybody deserves to breathe clean air. Thank you for sharing, Hunter. So unfortunately, environmental injustices will affect every aspect of your life. And Sahara is going to tell us about how it affects your social aspect. So here's Sahara. No one is immune to this. So she's going to tell you a little about it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Sorry. I believe the state of Maine has the opportunity to advance and influence fellow states as well as ourselves to tackle climate change with just being here at our petition send-off. With platform and the masses, we can begin to acknowledge the absolute discrepancies that are at hand as a result of this deterioration. We must also acknowledge that climate justice is a social justice issue. Globally, communities of color, as well as those of low income, are disproportionately affected by climate change. We often have a closed concept of what, or who, is exactly being impacted by these disparities. Did you know a key decider in where facilities that are toxic, like coal power plants in this country, are based on race? These plants have been exposed to these people and these plants are exposed to dangerous hazards that get into their food and water supplies, stunting the health of these communities. Our people are being neglected. We know that we are all dependent on our environment and all its products. Our climate is changing for the worst, and this being is not a distant thought that can be put off or dwelled upon. 
We really have an actual people with real experiences suffering already. This is why action and time is of the essence. Locally, climate change is costing jobs. Livelihoods are being affected in our state. This is imminent. What's going to happen years and years from now? What state will Earth be left in for my children or theirs as well? Will a state as beautiful as ours still be known for its environment and or beauty? That's why we all must take it upon ourselves and are doing that today by taking the step forward and know the actuality that this is our reality. What is being asked is modest of our state for implementing positive change for all of us equally. This petition is a step forward into the journey of preservation and efficiency. Thank you. Thank you, Saharla. One thing that we all need to remember in this changing climate is that we are all inhabitants of this planet, no matter the color of our skin, how much money is in our bank, or how old we are. So I would like to introduce a junior from Scarborough High School, Ryan O'Leary, to talk about social justice and the youth voice. Standing in front of me, I see a crowd of teachers, students, lawmakers, reporters, what have you. Each of us living completely separate lives, often fixated on our jobs, studies, and personal interests, that we tend to disregard the world at large and the earth that we live in. But long before we could build up these alternate personas and reassuring titles, we were all one in the same. We were all children of the earth. What we so often cease to understand is that we depend on the nature around us to give us life and prosperity. And in our so beautiful and beloved state of Maine, we often take for granted the pure beauty and resources this land has to offer. From bountiful fresh spring water to vast forests of untouched spruce and pine, uh, pine sprawling across the horizon far beyond the eye can see. From soft ocean breeze, majestic waves crashing at my feet. These are the delicate wonders of this land that we depend on, that we thrive on. And now, presented in front of us is perhaps the greatest challenge of our generation will face. Our so beloved land of Maine is dying, and we have both the obligation and the duty to save it. In working with both the Maine Youth Environmental Association and more locally, the Environmental Club of Scarborough, I have truly witnessed a new wave of positive action and change to combat this issue. Students now more than ever are speaking up and taking action against climate change by working within their schools and communities in starting recycling and composting programs, leading and attending climate marches, um, banning silverware from their lunchrooms, writing and meeting with members of Congress, and even installing or planning to install solar panels on their schools. And through it all, students are coming together, joining forces, and are ready to put an end to this chaotic mess we have in front of us. But this issue is going to take a lot more work, and we need the full support of the DEP if we want a future of our rising generation. If we cannot take bigger state-level actions, then we are looking at a catastrophic, catastrophic, <laughs> catastrophic sorry, um, future full of ocean acidity increases, rising sea levels, heat waves and droughts, and severe health hazards, to name a few. So now, let us remove our masks and forget our titles and remember who we really are. We are stewards of this land, children of the earth, and we must do whatever is in our ability to protect it. Thank you, thank you. I'd now like to introduce Angus Ferguson, one of the key lawyers in helping to draft this petition. Angus? So, uh, I've kind of hung around this effort for a while, um, opened some envelopes and taken some minutes at meetings, and, and I just want to thank all of the people who've uh, helped bring this petition to the place it is today. Uh, I could name so many. Um, I have to certainly uh, uh, name Sarah Lachance, who uh, really uh, spearheaded much of the first effort to uh, 
get this petition uh, before the voters. But I'm mostly here to introduce the person who's been at the center of it all, the person who really wrote this petition, the person who showed up at just about every meeting for the legal team, for youth engagement, for planning this event, and that is Beth Valentine. It does my heart good to hear all the previous speakers. Such wisdom coming from the mouth of babes. These kids get it. Climate change is real, climate change is dangerous, and climate change must be addressed now. And that's what we're here to do today, specifically to ask the Maine Department of Environmental Protection to fulfill its statutory, constitutional, and public trust obligations to do its part to protect all present and future citizens of the state of Maine from the worst effects of climate change by adopting rules to implement a 15-year-old law. Back in 2003, the state of Maine was a self-declared leader in efforts to address climate change. In that year, the legislature adopted an act entitled, An Act to Provide Leadership in Addressing the Threat of Climate Change. Among other things, the law established short, medium, and long-term goals to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The good news is that Maine achieved the short-term goal in 2010 and is on track to meet the mid-term goal in 2020. By DEP's own report, these emission reductions have largely been done, come about as a result of replacing high carbon fuels with natural gas. That is, market forces rather than concerted intentional effort have resulted in emission reductions. And while Maine's emissions have been declining since their peak in 2003, they have been not declining at a fast enough rate to prevent the real and immediate threat posed by climate change. So that brings us to the third goal established by that 2003 law. As you can see on the banner behind me, the long-term goal of Maine is, quote, is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, quote, sufficient to eliminate any dangerous threat to the climate. To accomplish this goal, reduction of 75 to 80 percent below 2003 levels may be required. And we are here today to demand that DEP adopt rules to implement this statutory goal by developing rules to reduce greenhouse gas emissions 75 to 80 percent below 2003 levels. Put another way, we are seeking annual emission reductions of at least 8 percent per year. This rate of reduction is based on the best available peer-reviewed climate science, which indicates that atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations must return to 350 parts per million by century's end in order to avoid the most catastrophic consequences of climate change. As a point of reference, and it has been mentioned earlier this afternoon, Pre-industrial levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere were 280 parts per million, and the globally average concentration in 2016 was 403.3 parts per million. Clearly, we have a lot of work to do. And of course, Maine cannot solve climate change on our own. That is why we are working in partnership with our Children's Trust, an organization that elevates the voice of youth to secure the legal right to a stable climate and healthy environment for the benefit of all present and future generations. Together, we are seeking systemic, science-based, emission reduction and climate recovery policies at all level of government, international, federal, state, and municipal. Here in Maine, 696 registered voters from at least 108 communities from Wallagrass to Wells and Weld to Whiting have signed the petition, along with dozens of youth who are too young to vote, yet who will bear the greatest cost of unchecked climate change. Following the event this afternoon, some of us will be delivering the petition, which is on that table in that green box, um, to DEP's Portland office, and I invite as many of you who are able to come to please do so. Once DEP has the petition, it will be required by the Maine Administrative Procedures Act to initiate rulemaking proceedings within 60 days. 
Accordingly, we expect to have a public hearing sometime this spring, and again, I invite you to join us, to come to Augusta to testify, and to press DEP to develop rules to ensure that present and future generations of Mainers are able to secure their legal right to a healthy atmosphere and stable climate system, because of course these are resources that we all depend upon for our survival and well-being. Thank you, Beth. You were so integral to this whole petition that we had to give you a special introduction there. So I would just like to reiterate that after this event, we will be going to the DEP to, to drop off the petitions. And if you have not already, up over there, you can sign it. It's a youth petition because the official ones are done, but every signature matters. Um, so I would like to reinvite Charles Spagner up to the stage, or front really, to lead us in a chant to close out this event. Thank you everyone so much. The delegation that is going to be presenting the petitions is going to be leaving in a, an electric vehicle, which will be out front. So it would be nice if we could all gather there and send them off joyously. What do we want? What do we want? What do we need? What do we need? Solar farms. Solar farms. Offshore wind. Offshore wind. Ocean waves. Ocean waves. Tidal two. Tidal two. Rooftop sun. Rooftop sun. Heat pumps too. Brand new grid. Brand new grid. Cut CO2. Cut CO2. What do we want? What do we want? What do we need? What do we need? Electric cars. Electric cars. Charge it here. Charge it here. Electric trucks. Electric trucks. Charge it there. Charge it there. Electric bikes. Electric bikes. And buses too. And buses too. Fast new trains. Fast new trains. And bike lanes too. And bike lanes too. What do we want? What do we need? What do we need? Carbon sinks. Carbon sinks. Build the soil. Build the soil. Organic farms. Organic farms. Don't use oil. Don't use oil. Green manure. Green manure. Eat less meat. Eat less meat. Locally grown. Locally grown. Grow your own. Grow your own. What do we want? What do we want? What do we need? What do we need? Common ground. Common ground. Urban green. Urban green. Island life. Lobster catch. Lobster catch. Sea run fish. Sea run fish. Hiking trails. Hiking trails. Great big parks. Great big parks. And dear to my heart, salmon run. Salmon run. <laughs> Thank you very much. Who's <laughs> 